Hello and welcome to my channel. Today we are going to discuss ecology from the point of view of AP. So let's discuss ecosystem first. It is a community of living organisms and their interactions with their abiotic partners. So biotic as well as abiotic components together they make ecosystem. Ecosystem can be now small in size such as tide pools uh, found near the rocky shores of many oceans and it can be bigger in size. So there are three categories of ecosystem, fresh water, ocean water and terrestrial. Ocean ecosystem has shallow ocean, it has deep ocean water and deep ocean surface. So the shallow ocean, uh, it's extremely diverse and coral reefs are the example and uh, deep ocean water, large number of planktons and krills. Now, freshwater ecosystems are the rarest account for only 1.8% of the earth's surface. For example, lake, rivers, streams, springs, and they support a variety of fish, amphibians, reptiles, insects, phytoplankton, fungi, and bacteria. Whereas terrestrial ecosystems, also known as for their diversity, they are grouped into large categories called biomes. For example, tropical rainforests, savannas, deserts, tundra, coniferous forest, and deciduous forest. Ecosystems are routinely expressed to various disturbance or changes in the environment that affect their compositions. Now the abiotic factors of the ecosystem are environmental factors that are not living. For example, temperature, light, water, nutrients, soil, wind and many more. And biotic factors are the living organisms like bacteria, protists, fungi, plants, animals and the competition which they have and along with the symbiosis. So ecology can be studied at different levels. One is at the organism level. So here the ecologists study the adaptations that allow individual living things to live in specific environment. Second we have population level. So study about the size, density, structure uh, of the group of the same species that live in the same place at the same time. Third we have community level interactions between different populations that live in the same areas. Fourth, we have ecosystem level that is study of the flow of energy and the recycling of nutrients in an area and how communities interact with the environment. Fifth, we have biosphere level at a bigger level. So interaction between ecosystems and how these interactions affect the entire earth. Now let's see the hierarchy starting from the large uh, surface biosphere the part of the earth that contains all ecosystems then comes biomes large region with same plant life and climate ecosystem that is community and its non-living surround next we have community that is populations that live together in a defined area followed by population group of organisms of one type that live in the same area and finally organism individual living beings so next we are going to start with population ecology. A population includes all of the organisms of the same species that live in the same area at the same time and show signs of reproduction with each other. Demography is the statistical study of population, how they change over time. A population size is represented by N, which is the number of individuals in a population. And population density is the number of individuals per unit of area or volume. It helps in describing the status of a population and for making predictions about future changes that may occur. Now how to measure population size? So we estimate the size of the population by taking samples from the population and using the samples to make inferences about the size of the actual population. There are two methods, quadrate method and mark recapture, recapture method. Uh, we'll start with the quadrate method. So this method is uh, suitable for sampling plants, slow moving animals and some aquatic organisms. Uh, also to isolate a standard unit of area for study of the distribution of an item over a large area. And in this random sampling happens without any bias. Whereas in the next method that is mark recapture method, uh, it is to estimate an animal population size where it is uh, impractical to count every individual and a portion of the population is captured, marked and released. Later another portion will be captured, marked and released within the which the sample is counted. It has been used to estimate the population of all uh, manner of animals from 
insects to the largest mammals. Uh, the formula is total mark that is m over population size n is equal to number of recaptures over second sample size. And the formula is n capital N is equal to capital M small n over small m. Now patterns of dispersion. Uh, so let's see the distribution patterns. Now how the individuals in a population are distributed in space at a given time. First way is clumped, aggregated and clustered. Usually plants, they distribute in this way. You know, uniform, equally spaced and similar patterns. Second, we have a random method. Uh, so plants with winds disperse like this, you know, winds disperse seeds. So they are randomly placed anywhere. Next, we have uniform E1 leaf, which is common in animals that defend their territories. They are uniformly distributed like this. And next, we have survivorship curves. Uh, survive, a survivorship curve is a graph showing the number of proportion of individuals surviving to each age for a given species or group. Now, uh, survivorship curves are constructed for a given cohort, that is a group of individuals of roughly the same age. So if we see uh, the type 1, type 2 and type 3, uh, that is number of survivors versus percent of the lifespan, you can see the type 1 humans, they are, you know, they survive very well. Uh, they survive well early and type 2 individuals have a death rate that is uh, relatively constant. And type 3, they have a low chance of survival and those who do survive may live to an advanced age. And this type 1 has a death rate that is relatively constant. Now, let's see type 1 individuals. They survive well early in life and generally live many more years uh, at an advanced age. And the death rate increases dramatically. Examples, uh, large mammals. Type 2 individuals, they have a death rate that is relatively constant at any age. For example, lizards, hydra and small mammals. And uh, type 3 individuals, uh, initially they have a low chance of survival and those who do survive they may live to an advanced age uh, so this is a graph showing male versus female comparison uh, of age so uh, an age sex pyramid breaks down a population into male and female genders and age ranges and the x-axis which is the horizontal axis uh, in which the graph displays either the number of individuals of that age or a percentage of the individual of that age the y-axis that is vertical axis age sex pyramids display five year age increments from birth at the top uh, bottom to old age at the top uh, so this this these are the three type of curves the rapid growth slow growth stable and shrinking curves this is the shrinking curve thanks for watching